Hello, my dear students. So today, under the topic molecular basis of inheritance, we will study about the regulation of gene expression. Now, how this gene expression takes place in the case of prokaryotes and eukaryotes? Okay. So in the case of eukaryotes, gene expression takes place at multiple level. So there are mainly four levels are there. The first one is the transcriptional level. When primary transcript is formed. So at the time of the formation of primary transcript. Second is processing level. When splicing and terminal additions are made. Splicing. Remember in that video of the protein synthesis. Splicing done. When the newly formed mRNA is prepared. At that time they have introns and exon zone. And those removal of the introns is called splicing. So processing level when splicing and terminal additions are made. Third one, transport of messenger RNA out of the nucleus into cytoplasm. When after the transcription process, our messenger, newly formed messenger RNA is ready, then it will move out from the nucleus to the cytoplasm and reach up to the ribosome for the formation of protein. So this is the third level. And the last one is a translational level. Ultimately, after reading the whole information from the messenger RNA with the help of transfer RNA, they form the protein polypeptide chain, all those things. So, translational level. So, these are the four labels where, where we can check the gene expression in the case of eukaryotes. Okay. Now, in the case of prokaryotes, gene expression is regulated by accessory protein. Few proteins are there. They regulate, they control the gene expression. Okay, and there is one term, operon. Okay, now what is this? It is a functioning unit of the DNA that contains a cluster of genes. And all those genes under the control of single promoter. This one. And this is called operon. So here you can see the diagram I have drawn here. Your yeah, promoter gene is there, regulator gene is there, structural gene are there and operator. So operator, structure, regulator, promoter, those all genes are present on this segment of DNA. Okay. Now here they all are controlled by single promoter. So this structure is called operon. Now operons are also of two types. That is inducible operon and repressible operon. Now, what is this inducible operon? Here, this type of operon is normally in off condition. Okay? But becomes operational in the presence of inducer. An example is a lac operon. So, this normally it remains in an off condition. Only when the lactose is present there. Then they are in on condition. That is lack operon. Now repressible operon is normally in on condition. But can be switched off when the cell does not require any type of product. So in that case they will be off. Example here is a tryptophan operon system. But this one you don't have. In your syllabus, in your syllabus you have inducible operon that is lac operon. Okay. So how in the presence or in the absence of lactose this operon works. So usually this lac operon is in off condition. Now we will detail study about the lac operon. Now this one mainly in the case of prokaryotes. Fine. Now two scientists Jacob and Monad explain this model, propose this model, lac operon. Here I have drawn the structure of this one and I have written the gene which alphabet I have written here that indicates P that is for promoter gene, R for regulator gene, again P is here that is promoter, O is operator gene and 3 Z, Y, A they are the structural gene because later on they will give that is galactosidase, permease and transacetylase enzyme. Okay. Now here, this is the first one of condition. That what I said, normally inducible 
open on they are in off condition off condition when lactose is not present that's why they have given the name lack open on because of the lactose here absence of lactose on condition presence of lactose so they have given a lack open on fine now here the first condition that is off condition when lactose is not present just see what happened now here the regulator gene and promoter gene is here promoter gene where the rna polymerase enzyme attach and this rna polymerase enzyme will help in transcription process fine now this regulator gene undergo transcription produce messenger rna okay then messenger rna undergo translation will produce repressor protein this repressor protein here i have indicated with a red color circle i think that's visible this is a repressor protein now what happened when the lactose is not present lactose absent this repressor protein will go and bind on that operator gene that will block the operator gene and when repressor protein block the operator gene then what happen rna polymerase which is present on this promoter will not able to slide on this segment okay and when it will not go that side towards the structural gene they will not produce any enzyme because they don't need why they need the enzyme from the structural gene to digest lactose and here lactose is not present so genes will not produce these structural gene will not produce any enzyme so this is the off condition when lactose absent okay now come to this side when the lactose is present now again the same p promoter gene r is the regulator gene then p promoter on promoter gene rna polymerase is attached this enzyme will help a further reading of this further transcription and help in the formation of enzyme from the structural gene isn't it so rna polymerase is attached with the promoter then you can see the operator gene is here then three structural z y and a now this regulator gene undergo transcription produce messenger rna then translation then produce the repressor protein same as this way repressor protein fine now here in this case what happened i have written here see this is the membrane lactose is present lactose when it will enter into the cell this lactic lactose little bit amount of lactose will convert into alloplactose will convert into alloplactose and rest of the lactose will remain there now this inducer this alloplactose is called as inducer okay now whatever the repressor protein present here i have drawn with the red color and this alloplactose will bind now why they will bind because well this is not here lactose is not there this repressor protein directly go and block the operator but this repressor protein is having high affinity for the inducer or for allo lactose so instead of going there that will bind with allo lactose and remain here only you can see the bind red color and i have drawn with the blue color is the inducer allo lactose and rest of the lactose is here in the cell when the repressor protein has not blocked the operator protein now here the way is free path is free now rna polymerase will slide on this and that will initiate the formation of further enzymes so these structure undergo transcription they will form messenger rna then they will undergo translation and then they produce z structural gene will produce beta galactosidase enzyme y structural gene will produce permease enzyme and a structural gene will produce 
trans acetylase enzyme and these three enzymes will help in the digestion of lactose fine so this is the condition of corn when lactose is present so lactose little bit amount of lactose converts into allolactose and that will that is called inducer so this reproductive protein is having high affinity for allolactose they will bind and this will protein will not block the operator and blocking is not done so what happened promoter which is rna polymerase attached with the promoter that will slide on the segment and will produce further enzymes for the digestion of lactose right because lactose is present here so this is the working of lac operon i think it's now it's clear to you okay mainly the off condition and on because inducible normally they are in off condition and you have in your syllabus inducible operon not the repressible operon so i'm explaining here only one the lac operon fine so just have a look of this one now the next topic is genomics okay it is a study of genome present in an organism now what is this genome genome is a whole genetic material of an organism so we can say genomics is the study of genetic material present in any organism two main branches of genomics are structural genomic and functional genomics now what is structural genomics it is a study of structure of genome and the proteins it encodes okay now it includes the sequencing of genomic dna for each species so mainly structure of genome and the proteins it encodes comes under structural genomics now the functional genomics this is study of gene expression gene regulation and phenotype production okay so functional genomics mainly study of gene expression gene regulation and phenotype production it involves understanding of the transcriptional control of the functional gene in the genome so mainly these three points that we study under the functional genomics now what are the applications of genomics it is used in agriculture to produce transgenic crops having more desirable or important characteristics second it can lead to introduce new genes in microbes to produce why we need new genes to produce enzyme proteins and biofuels so here the introduction of the new genes in the microbes third one it is also used in forensic analysis so these are the three applications of genomics now the next one is a human genome project hgp this one is a mega project of almost 13 years for sequencing complete genome genome is whole genetic material of any organism this project is launched in year 1990 and completed in year 2003 and it is coordinated by us department of energy and national institute of health and all i think 12 countries 12 countries participated in this human genome project now what are the main goals of the human genome project first one mapping the whole genome at the level of nucleotide sequences okay second one determining the location of genes 
within within the human genome so exact location of the genes third to store the information whatever they have gathered from the project in the form of database and they develop tools also for data analysis this is the main goal of this human genome project next is to solve any ethical legal or social problems which may arise from this project and the last is the project was completed with the help of automated dna sequencing machine so new technologies also developed under this human genome project so these are the goals and 12 countries participated in this one okay so application of genomics is important and the goals of human genome project sometime for three marks in the board exam they ask now dna fingerprinting what is this so it is a profiling test to identify and evaluate the genetic material or the nucleotide sequence present in the fragment of the dna template this is called dna fingerprinting mostly 99.9% nucleotide sequence is same in all the individuals now dna carries some specific sequence of nucleotides called vntr what is this variable number of tandem repeats okay so these are the sequences of 2200 base pairs that are repeated many times in different places in the genome so these are the number of tandem repeats in the genome in the genetic material right so length of the this vntr variable number of tandem repeats so length of the region with vntr is different in each individual this is the main difference so as the length of the vntr is different so this is the key factor in dna profiling that is length of the vntr because only this is the difference between the individuals okay so each individual they have different different length of the vntr so that's why it is the key factor now steps involved in dna fingerprinting techniques so there are total seven steps dna isolation amplification fragmentation electrophoresis southern blotting hybridization and photography now isolation first we have to isolate the dna from blood semen hair roots tissue samples etc so we can obtain we can isolate that material now dna amplification actually this is done if the dna fragment is very small so we need the copies of that sample so for copying dna amplification step is there and the technique is pcr technique pcr technique is then used and dna is subjected to in vitro replication and then we get the number of copies of dna sample dna fragmentation restriction endonuclease enzyme cuts dna the name of this enzyme you should know okay so restriction endonuclease enzyme cuts dna at specific location and form piece of dna having variable length and this phenomenon that to cut the dna at a specific location is called rflp restriction fragment length polymerization so there we have learned to terms dntr and rflp for one mark sometimes they ask this question 
Okay, so restriction fragment length polymerization. And this is done with the help of the enzyme restriction endonuclease. Okay, next is the electrophoresis. Now we have taken the DNA sample. We have cut it with the help of the enzyme at specific location. Now DNA sample thus formed are then located on agrocell gel electrophoresis. So what happened when we locate on this electrophoresis, the negatively charged DNA fragment move to the positive pole, opposite, okay? And this result in the formation of bands. So this is electrophoresis, formation of bands by moving the negative charged DNA towards the positive pole. Next is the southern blotting. The bands formed after electrophoresis are then blotted on nylon membrane. In this, single stranded DNA gets embedded into the nylon, nylon membrane. Single stranded DNA. Okay? So on nylon membrane. Next is hybridization. Here, the bands are flooded with a single stranded radioactive DNA probe. Right? So here, in the southern blotting, Nylon membrane is having single strand DNA. Now in the case of hybridization, when that is loaded with radioactive DNA probe, this one is also single stranded. Due to natural affinity, that is sample DNA and probe DNA, they will form double stranded structure. So single strand from the sample DNA, on that nylon membrane and another single strand that is an active radioactive DNA probe together they will form double stranded structure. These double stranded DNA remain embedded in the nylon membrane. Remaining double stranded now will attach on that nylon membrane but the remaining single stranded DNA probe are washed off. They will be moved out from the nylon membrane. Only the double stranded structure will be there. Now last is the photography. This nylon membrane is kept in contact with x-ray film. Okay and when that is kept in contact with x-ray film, the DNA bands due to the radioactive probe, this one, they give Photographic image on X-ray film. Photographic image on. Why? Because of the radioactive DNA probe that will give the photographic image for documentation. So these are the steps that involved in fingerprinting technique. Okay. Now, usually this question for the long answers they ask. So you have to write point wise. I have given seven points with subheadings. Now, what are the applications of this process? That is DNA fingerprinting. So here are the application. First one to establish parentage in dispute cases, to settle the insurance claims used in that is also useful in genomics. Okay, study of phylogeny, fingerprinting. We use there also. Then benefits the agricultural science too. And the last one, fingerprinting, that is also used as a tool in forensic investigations. So these are the few applications of DNA fingerprinting. So in this way, we have finished this chapter. So our four chapters are over. And now I will start the fifth one. Okay. So just have a look of this one. Thank you.